Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Ready Precision. This video, we will be continuing our series on APIs in Niagara and specifically looking at the requirements that we need to be aware of in order to make use of these things from within Niagara. So let's jump in here and take a look at uh, what all of these things are. All right, so the first key requirement, and that's a, it's a little bit different for these um, specific licensed features, is that in order for them to work, we need to have an active SMA on whatever we're putting them on. This could be a JACE or a supervisor. Active SMA, and the SMA needs to be active for as long as you want these drivers or uh, pieces of software to work, right? So if our, our SMA works at the beginning, we set everything up, everything's running. A year later, the SMA ends, expires, those things no longer work. Our JSON toolkit, our HTTP client driver will stop functioning altogether. Um, they do have some features built in inside um, to alarm and remind you that your SMA is coming to an end uh, to prevent that kind of thing from happening, but just keep it in mind from a uh, functionality standpoint. As I just sort of mentioned, um, these are licensed features, so we're talking about the JSON toolkit as well as the HTTP client driver, and they are included in your demo licenses. So super easy to make use of them now if you have a demo license on your machine, which most people who are working with this stuff on a daily basis do. Um, it's included. You can pop open a station. You can start playing with these things without much of an issue. All right, so the first piece of those two is our JSON toolkit. This is what allows us to interact with JSON. We can pull uh, individual pieces of data out of uh, a larger um, piece of JSON that we would have gotten from a server. Um, and we can make use of them in a way that we expect to within Niagara. So pulling them out to blocks, we can write them to points, uh, that kind of thing. Um, the JSON toolkit can be leveraged alongside the HTTP client driver if you're working with APIs like we are, um, or you can use it alongside the MQTT driver if your device or service that you're working with um, offers MQTT as an option. You can just load the JSON in as a payload, or you can pull the uh, JSON payload out of an MQTT um, uh, device that you maybe are talking to. This is an older-ish feature, so it's been around in Niagara since 4.7. Um, so anything 4.7 and above will support this. Um, and it's not capacity licensed because it's a toolkit and not a driver. Um, the points that you use and things that you use within it don't count towards your global capacity. Licensing-wise, uh, we've got two different uh, versions of the license, two different part numbers. We've got the dr-json and the dr-s-json. Tongue twister. Um, for the JSON, the supervisor. And then we go to the next level, uh, our communications. How are we going to talk uh, HTTP? How are we going to do a, a put? How are we going to do a get in order to get that information um, out of an outside server into our station? Well, we have to use the HTTP client driver in order to make that happen. And that was added within uh, Niagara 4.12. So more recently, so anything 4.12 or, or above, this is a feature that you can uh, license. And the difference here is that it's a driver, so the points count towards your global capacity. Um, keep that in mind when you're doing your general licensing of your JC or your supervisor, if you're going to be leveraging something like this. And then the licenses themselves are going to be the dr-http and the dr s HTTP um, for your JSON and your supervisor. So, no technical details yet. Uh, that'll be coming in our next several videos. Um, but we, I wanted to lay the groundwork here because I know most people probably don't have much interaction with these two uh, licensed features um, within Niagara. So it's nice to know uh, a little bit more details about how they're licensed and um, how they count towards your global capacity if they do or they don't and the versions that are required. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, stay tuned for more videos in this series. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about any of this stuff and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.